Hey, Ryan here from Vault. So we're going to set up a 40 yard dash with the Smart Speed Plus, and we're going to do intervals of 10 yard, 20 yard, and 40 yard with gates at each interval. Okay, got our gates here. Take them out. I'll get you to help me, Callum. We'll get the tripods going as well. We've got our accompanying battery packs. Make life easier instead of having to charge them over and over again. And we'll get the tripods set up. So just grab it, rotate it around all the way. And what's the typical battery life for those packs? Battery's gonna be seven hours. Okay. So I think continuously you can do 4,000 tests, 4,000 reps. Grab the tape. We'll get a we'll get measuring. I'm gonna kind of zoom in here, Derek, as well. So you'll see on top of the Smart Speed unit that we've got an arrow. Just to give you a bit of a visual cue to align it. So what I like to do is make sure I've got a nice cue. Obviously aligning the track is perfect. But you've got that arrow and just try and make sure all the time that the reflector is kind of perpendicular to the line. It's not going to be tilted to the left or right. Because sometimes that can just create issues when it comes to standardization and stuff. But you're set up pretty well for success with the, the visual cue. So this is just kind of a manual visual setup and then you'll get a sort of a tighter calibration once you turn it on? Yeah, so once we turn it on, we're gonna get even more visual cues with regards to the laser itself. But for me, just it makes life easier when you put in that extra 60 seconds to set things up beforehand. So when you're setting up the gates, you'll see the batteries can come out. It's actually great if you're in like a big facility. You don't need to move the gates if you've got your standardized position for them. Just to guard the battery and recharge them. But then you'll see it switch on. If it's the case that you want to have two different lanes going, you can set two to a different channel. A different channel. And then you can have races going at the same time. Works well. So you can see that we've got a red laser popping up. Maybe you can't see it in the sun. What we're going to do is we're going to try and align that. You'll see I've got my visual cue to make sure that I'm fully aligned here. So this is telling me that it's not level. Which is actually really interesting because sometimes it pops up on the reflector and you think you're lined up but you're not fully perpendicular so it'll take a bit of fiddling and we'll get that set up again. So you're really trying to get a dead center. Yeah, so you'll see it goes green. I lost it there. There we go. Gotcha. Perfect. And if there's issues during the test it's going to pop up on my iPad and say gate number 36 is not aligned and okay. then I can hop in and intervene. Making sure the tripods are the same length, legs are extended. I got one wasn't. There we go. Same thing. Good to go. Small details like just making sure the tripods are all at the same position, same height. Saves you a lot of time in the long run. And you can set these quite far apart too, right? The width of these can be... Recommended is up to four meters apart. So if you're working on ice hockey, that's gonna be what you're gonna look at. But if you're on a track setting, what's that, about a meter slightly over? Okay, you've done the hardware setup, all the gates are set up, a line. Now what's the next step? So we're gonna hop on our iPad or our phone, depending on what you've got. You can do iOS or Android, so it's pretty applicable for everyone. We're going to connect the gates via Bluetooth. So previously with other models or other systems, you're going to have to find like a radio receiver or transmitter, connect to that and then connect to the gates. We connect to one gate as our head unit and then from there they all connect via Bluetooth. So it's a pretty quick process, so you can see it here. Literally hop into connect device. You'll see four gates pop up, so I'll figure out which one do I want to talk to essentially. So I'll go for the first gate here, which is number 36. Click, connect. 
you'll get some insights into their battery level to make sure everything's good to go. And that's all started. So start a session, choose what you want to do. So I'm going to go for, I've got my four gates connected. It'll, it'll give me the drills that I can do with four gates, not a five, 10, five, if I've got four, obviously. Uh, then we'll go for a 40 yard sprint, done. We'll review the gate layout. So I've got gate A, gate B, gate C, gate D, and you'll see that pop up on the gate. So A, we got C here. So that's telling me that it's not in position. So I'm able to easily change that. So I'm gonna go for A, I'll move the screen. C is my next gate. And then I've got D as my next gate. I'm gonna finish with B. So regardless of where you set them up, you can rearrange it rearrange within it. your... Yeah, you don't have to move the gate. You just tell the system which gate to ah. identify as the... This is drag and drop. The 10, the 20, and the 40. Confirm that. And then profile selection. So you can go for auto select with profiles. If you've got a group of players, eight guys, 10 guys, whatever it may be, one, someone will run their rep and then the next person can go straight away. Or you can do manual select. So that just means that the results will stay up for a bit longer and I have to wait and cue them to go. All right. Break beam or in beam start. So we're gonna get Callum to do an in beam start today. Yeah, he'll hop in the beam. It'll give him a cue when he's good to go, and then we can start the wrap that way. You can also do brake beam, but it just depends on your own preference. And then finally, we've got a rearm time. So rearm time means how soon after the first rep can the next guy go and the next rep happen. Typically, it's 500 milliseconds for us. That can be made lower or longer, depending on what you're working with. Then we've got profiles. So I've got the Derek Hansen run group here. I'll click into it. I'm only gonna go for Callum. So I've got the ability, if you wanna look at it here, Derek, as well. Got a range of different guys in this group. I can move them up and down. I can position someone at the first, or the, the start of the queue, or I can put someone to the back of the queue, depending on who you're working with, as well. I'll choose only Callum, it'll be hard to see there. And Callum's good to go. So whenever I'm ready, I'll press ready, and you'll see the gates will light up. So we've got our start gate with Callum's name on it. Probably wanna get a few close-ups of that and then each other gate will turn green. So he's gonna cross those gates and we'll see the, the splits pop up. So his 10 yard split, his 20 yard split, and then his 40 yard time as well. And you're doing all of the uh, roster setup uh, the night before, well before you have it already in your database. We've got two options. So you'll do it on Vault Hub, which is our database, and it's pretty, pretty quick. So there's an Excel spreadsheet, you can input it, and all of the profiles are there populated to a specific group. Or in the case that we're here today with Callum and someone else shows up, I can create a profile in the moment as well and that'll be uploaded to the, the hub after the fact. So you've got two options. I would recommend definitely putting some time into your admin and getting your player names up the night before or the day before or the morning before even. Uh, and then you're good to go. It's always better to have more names and then if they don't show up, whatever. But if you're adding them, it takes more time. Exactly. So it's just a plug and play approach. You can choose the group and you can remove certain people from the group as well if you need to do that. So because we're doing a three point start, we're going to bring this start gate a bit lower so Palin can get into his position. And that way it's not something that he has to worry about when he's starting the rep because sometimes if you've got the gate too high, the athlete's more concerned about are they in the beam rather than can they work on their start technique. So it's a good option to have. There you go. This is just a jog through, Kyle, just make sure that the gates are good. So you're just going to have him do a really easy test just to make sure everything's working? Yep. Hop into three point start. So I can see Callum's score here, 9.707 on the iPad, and you'll also be able to see his splits. So we've got the 10 yard split, the 20 yard split, and we've got the final 40 yard time. So it's pretty interactive for the athletes. They can do their rep, they can see what they got, and they can come back, but it's also interactive for the coach and even the spectators. So it stops people running up to you and saying, can I see the iPad? What did my, my kid get? Or, Whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah, it's so. very transparent too, right? So nobody's like fudging times right. or. But if you're talking about a combine situation, that's just cool for the crowd to see yep. as well. Yep. Okay, happy enough with that, Kyle? Yep. Cool. So we'll hop into a three point start and we'll start going through some faster reps. Okay. 
Okay, we'll get you to hop in, Calm, and don't go on try, if you say so. So when Calm hops in his three point start, a few common issues that I would see. Sometimes people align the gates too far forward or too far back. So what I like to do is I'll bring the gate to a lower height than our other gates, and I'll make sure that the beam is intersecting with Calm's midsection or his shoulder. I'm not gonna let the arm be the trigger. Sometimes you can do that depending on the, the situation, 5-10-5s in the combine, for example. But for me, just to ensure the data is accurate and we've got no false starts, that's what I like to do with this. We're gonna be in the beam for about two seconds and it's gonna load through three different levels of green. Once we get to that third level and the gate is fully green, you're good to go, he's in the beam. Okay, whenever you're ready, let's go for a proper rep here. You've worked with uh, the previous Smart Speed system and you've probably worked with other timing systems. What do you like about the Smart Speed Plus system and why is it making your life easier? Because I know you're setting this up quite frequently. Yeah, for sure. So two things that I really like about it that have improved my workflow and the experience for the athletes that I'm testing. Number one, our 360 degree wraparound display. So you can actually give feedback straight away to the athletes on the gates. You don't have to worry about them running up to you and saying, can I see my score? Or a parent or a coach or whoever it may be. It's an interactive experience. It drives engagement, but also it drives intent. When you see someone in front of you and you know what their 10 yard split was, or you know what their 40 yard was, that's gonna drive the whole group. So that's that's been awesome. Second thing then is our cloud-based approach. So I've used timing solutions before where you've got an Excel spreadsheet, you've got pen and paper, you're doing the result or the test, you're getting the result and you're writing it down and you're wasting about 30 seconds per athlete. So if you've got a large group, that, that really adds up. And then afterwards, you've got to upload that data with us the data goes straight to the iPad and from there straight to the cloud. You don't have to worry about spending too much time with analysis, spending too much time actually figuring out where did you put the pen and paper after the session. And then if you've got other valid solutions, the world's your oyster. So you've got four stacks, Nordboard and Smart Speed. It all goes to the one place. It's all like a holistic, integrated experience and it just saves you so much time. Ultimately, when you talk about time, you want to spend more time with your athletes, not with the technology. And that's what I feel Valve has done really well.